Hello everyone, welcome to this new video on analyzing a security scenario. So I want to look at the story and understand the issues in terms of the, the security methodology behind it. So we're going to look at the critical assets. We want to understand the vulnerabilities involved, the threats that are arising. We will then discuss the risks and finally get some ideas about controls. And I'm going to do this today with Marina. So together we're going to discuss the incident. And I hope it's useful for your general understanding of cybersecurity and security assessment. So enjoy watching. Hi, Marina. How are you? Oh, I'm not bad, and you? Yeah, not bad either. Thanks. So, um, well, thanks for spending a bit of time with me today on analyzing this security scenario that we found the other day on the register. So I'm showing on the screen here that story. And mm -hmm. um, usually what's the best? Usually how, how should we start this, Marina? What do you look at first when you want to understand more about the security background, you know, the issues behind the story? What do you tend to well, do? Well, after, after skimming the story, obviously, yeah. um, so assets and security goals. Mm -hmm. So maybe what I would say is if people want to pause the video and actually read the story, then um, they can find the link underneath in the comment section of the video. They can do that now. And then we would, because we've done that already, haven't we, Marina? And then we can talk about the assets. So, um, yeah. Usually when we talk about assets, we need to find the category of assets involved here. That's quite straightforward here, right? It's either data, software, hardware, people, in your opinion. I mean, have you been able to identify the critical assets already, Marina? Yeah. Uh, well, I thought data. Yeah, it was data, clearly. And what sort of data? So criminal evidence data. What might that have? Mm. That might be a combination of information, private information on individuals. And yeah, it's uh, personal information, very personal yeah. information. I mean, it's got, you could argue, you know, from the security point of view, is it about uh, you know the individuals and their privacy because that's an aspect as well of security, or is it, is it about um, someone else who is worried about that data? That's really important. I call this the security assessor. So when we do this story, we need to be clear about the particular security assessors, and in this case, I think it is it is the police. So we're not looking at mm. the worries about those individuals, okay? And then so. I guess. Yeah, what what might it be? I mean, so the owner, the owner of the data, well, the controller obviously is the police. The yeah. we're looking at it from the point of view of the police being the owner. Um, I mean, you could also think about um, the individuals if down the line. If you, I mean, when I followed up the story a bit, uh, apparently some records that should have been deleted weren't. And so that that's also a, an aspect. Mm -hmm. But um, from the initial point of view, the the owner is the police and the asset is the data. That's right. So we probably have some kind of biometric data, maybe, you know, fingerprints. We would have names and we would have the kind of um, record of, of offenses, you know. So that kind of information. That's right. So once we've identified the critical asset, then usually the next step is to think about the actual um, security violation, I guess, of the, you know, the requirements, the security requirements of that data. And, um, you know, that's the CIA, basically. So we are interested in confidentiality of the data, integrity, availability. And in this case, I think it's quite straightforward. I would say the main security goal affected, what would you say, Marina? Oh, availability. I think it's about availability, exactly, because what happened here, um, let's see. Oh, stuff got deleted. Stuff got deleted, a data loss. That's pretty, that's pretty bad, actually, data loss due to a technical issue. So it's a little bit vague on that story and one has to read quite, um, carefully and maybe even follow up on other stories to really understand what the reason was. Um, 
and that's kind of linked to the vulnerability as well because um or the threat and in fact it's really important to understand is it about a threat or primarily about a vulnerability and i think in this story um what would you say marina have you had well, a chance it's, it's to think a about vulnerability. it yeah i mean the yeah. problem was, was with the coding of the script that cleaned the data i mean it was supposed to clean out records that um legally the police should no longer keep but um mm -hmm. it cleaned out records that it shouldn't have cleaned out and uh, on the follow up it it failed to clean out some records that it should have which also brings us into data right. protection territory so but, um, yes hmm? so something that's been going on internally actually so it's a kind of internal vulnerability it's i mean would you say it's a technical vulnerability or maybe even something of a different kind well it's uh it's a problem with the uh the writing of the scripts problem yeah. with the software mm -hmm. and uh, according to one person from the bcs is is this it follows up it follows that it's a problem with the testing of the software mm -hmm. because if it had been thoroughly tested then um then this bug should have been discovered before it was rolled out yeah i mean i would argue that actually i mean this is such a critical activity here to upgrade or to clean data or to to back up data it's such a critical mission that um the real vulnerability here is probably the kind of lack of um, responsibility or insight or care of the people who are writing the software or managing, you know, the whole process. So it's a, in my opinion, it's actually a people vulnerability. So, you know, or a vulnerability of, of policies and procedures. So quite often we find that um, the human element is actually um, quite important and quite often involved in these things. W would you agree on that, Marina? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, you could say. I mean, one could argue. Why did they not have a backup? But if well, this was, if this was data that they legally could no longer keep, then should, would it would it be considered legal to have the backup? I mean, you could you could argue that no, they shouldn't have a backup. So if yes. they were supposed to be deleting it forever, then um, then. You know that you, you should also remove backups i mean well i think one alternative approach might mm -hmm. be is to delete it back it up delete it from the live system some time before you have to um sort of do the deletion legally and then when then when you know everything's still working and and that you haven't deleted things you shouldn't have and so on only then can mm -hmm. you say okay the time has run out for us to keep this legally. Yeah. Now you can remove the backup. It's sort of swapping out the data or something, right? Mm. So anyway, yeah. I mean, that's basically what they need to figure out, the safest way of doing this. But clearly they haven't. So so what would then the, the threats? I mean, would there be any direct threats we can see potentially? Because well, what, what I find interesting about what a threat may be in this case is who is the actor? And right from what I can see, there is no actor. So I think what we're doing here is maybe it's a sort of long-term potential for new threats to arise, or basically for, um, you know, statistically spoken, it probably could mean that the capability of, of dealing with crime in the future has been reduced, which is effectively oh, yes, still a vulnerability, yeah. actually. But any yeah. any future crime, you know, would be would be a threat, so to speak, because... Well, yes, I mean, if you yeah. find DNA evidence or yeah. some serious um, crime and um, it may be, may have been committed by somebody yeah. on the deleted data. That's right. And they would have no idea and wouldn't, and you, you'd leave the perpetrator to to be able to continue committing more, more crimes when That's they right. might have been caught. So I think what we typically want to figure out is, you know, what's the risk? And in order to understand the risk, we have to think about the, the likelihood of the things happening and the, the damage, the impact. And what I would say here is, I mean, it's, it's bound to happen again in the future, you know, maybe not very frequently, but it's bound to happen. 
and also the impact could potentially be quite dramatic. I mean, these are crimes, so the safety of of humans could be at risk. That's pretty mm. pretty bad. So I think on the whole, we would say that's quite a high risk of of damage, you know, arising from this. So that's um, it's quite serious. So anyway, just to then to to finish this off, we would like to talk about controls, and there are all sorts of different controls, of course, technical and procedural, and you could even look at um, software solutions or, or hardware devices in general. But what, what might be the answer here? I wonder to know whether you have any thoughts. Well, as the sort of procedure I mentioned earlier, and obviously uh, better testing. Um, yes. And, and I mean, how, yeah, I'm still getting at the human element here because obviously oh, all the these human. things, yeah, they will have to happen because of humans triggering the implementation of the control, right? I mean, we say that a control has to be effective. It has to be actually used. So how, but how can I get the humans to be better at security then, I wonder? And it's kind of um, obvious and yet it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> these are my standard answers actually here. Mm, <laughs> Usually yeah. when you want well. people to, to do this, then you need to raise their security awareness. You need to educate well, them, yes. right? You need to train them. Um, you need to, to, to vet them. You need to make sure they get better. So these kind of answers. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just, I'm just wondering what, what kind of training specifically might have helped yeah. in this case i mean it's not the kind of training that the police would be in a position to give no, and it one would, would be, hope that yeah. their their um sort of database admin people would uh, be good enough at their job to to you know not not yes. make this mistake you so, would you would hope who I mean, knows exactly who knows so providing better training, that's always um, always an issue. But I think we've understood the story now. We've looked at the, the main aspects of it, and I would recommend always when we are looking at these case studies to proceed in such, a, such an order. And it's been um, very useful to talk to you, makes it much easier to sort of think it through. So thanks a lot, Marina, for your time. No problem. See you soon. All right. Okay, then. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.